Okay, neutralization reactions are reactions that we will have um, an acid and a base reacting, and then you get a salt and water. And water by itself is neutral. That's why we call this a neutralization reaction. Now, you could add more. If there's more acid than base, then you might have an acidic solution at the end. But if you get to the correct point where the acid and base form just the salt and water, there's no excess acid or salt or base, then it would be at a neutralization reaction. That's the kind of reaction we're going to do when we do titrations in our lab. Um, but you have an acid like hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide. It's basically a double displacement reaction where sodium and hydrogen switch spots and we get sodium chloride and then water. But because the salt and water are neutral, a neutral solution, it is a neutralization reaction. So when we do our, um, we do our titrations tomorrow, we are, or not tomorrow, Friday, we get a sodium or a sodium chloride solution at the end after we add this acid and base together, which cannot go down the drain. But we once we react them together, we get a sodium chloride solution, which can go down the drain because it's neutral now. So when we do our titrations, all of our excess, um, while our reactant, our leftover solution is going to go down the drain. Same here, we have two hydrochloric acid because it needs to be balanced. So hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide gives us calcium chloride. This two is here because calcium is a two plus charge and then plus two water. So if I want to write the products of these neutralization reactions, what am I going to get for my product? Okay, water. And what would be my salt? I'm going to write it down here. That's hydrochloric acid. This hydrogen and this aluminum are going to switch spots. Al, Cl, three. Why three? Yep, aluminum is three plus charge. So now is it balanced? No, chlorines aren't, so I need to put a three here for balancing the chlorine. I have three oxygens and six hydrogens on this side, so I need a three here. Now it's balanced. What about B? What do we get? We get our salt and water, right? What's our salt? Well, we cations come first. Ba, PO4. What are the charges, though? Barium has a what charge? You should tell. You should be able to tell just by looking at our reactants, because we have a two here. So it's a two plus, and then phosphate is what charge? Three minus. So our formula would be, we need to get this to plus six and minus six. That would be the, there you go. Okay. I have to be able to write out balanced equations. Plus, what's our second product? H2O, water. Now we need to balance it. So we have three bariums, so we need a three there. How about phosphates, are they balanced? How many phosphates do we have here? We have two phosphates, okay. Phosphate is the PO4 part, so we have two phosphates, so we need to put a two here. We have two phosphates on this side. Now what about oxygen? We have two times three is six oxygens, and then for hydrogen we have two times three plus 
this two times three, so we have 12 hydrogen, so I need a six in front of the water. Okay. So we're gonna do more of these tomorrow when we do our titration notes. We will be doing this kind of reaction when we do our lab. Um, we'll use hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, I believe, for our lab. Okay, water by itself actually is called self-ionizes because the water breaks up. You have two water molecules next to each other. One of those water molecules breaks apart and one of the hydrogens goes to the other water, water molecule and creates hydronium. And then what's left is hydroxide, so it ionizes itself. But what's the pH of water, pure water? You guys know, can you remember? Yep, yeah, seven. So that means it's neutral. And when a, when a solution is neutral, that means the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide are equal to each other. And in pure water, they are both 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. So we're going to talk on the next slide what molar means. But we have equal concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide. So molar it just means the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution, which is moles per liter. So molar is equal to moles per liter. We're going to use that. Um, we're going to use molarity when we talk about concentration. Any concentration that we use is going to be a molarity. Whenever you see, if you notice on that last slide, like H3O plus, it was in brackets. That means that's the concentration of hydronium, and then it will give you the number. So on the last slide, it was that was our concentration. So whenever you see brackets around a number, that's telling you that's the concentration. So just to look at molarity, get some practice using molarity, what is the molarity of this solution? So if we have moles per liter, um, our molarity is equal to moles per liter. Do we know moles? No, do we have, do we know meters, liters, I mean? So we have 3.50 liters. Can we get grams into moles? Yeah. We're going to have to do a conversion. So grams have to go on bottom, so we have 58.45. If you add it up, sodium plus, sodium plus chloride, you'd get 48.45 from the periodic table. And that's the mass of one mole of sodium, hydro, sodium chloride. And I don't know what that is. <coughs> I, well, tell me what you get, and I'll know. I'll recognize it from last period. Yep. Yeah, that was it. So this number is our mole. So that's what we can put up here for our molarity: 1.54 moles of sodium chloride. So now we take 1.54 divided by 3.5 and we use big M to, sh to show molar. So 0.44 molar is our molarity, our concentration. Moles per liter. This one is, it gives us our molarity, so we have 0.5 molar, and it wants to know how many moles. So X number of moles over, we have our liters, is 0.8 liters. So our moles would be 0.5 times 0.8, right? And that is, 8 times 5 is 40, so 0.5 times 0.8 is 0.4. Any questions on molarity? Now, a lot of times we'll be using, we won't be using liters. We're going to be using smaller volumes, and it's easier to measure them in milliliters. So if we're given milliliters, we need to convert that into liters, which would be how many milliliters in a liter? Anyone know? 
thousand. Thousand milliliters in a liter, so you're just going to move the decimal three spots depending on if you're going liters to milliliters or milliliters to liters. Milliliters to liters, you're going to move it three to the left. Okay, okay so um, the ion product of water is Kw. So whenever you see Kw, that's just the ion product of water, that's the product of hydrogen or the hydronium. Whenever you see hydrogen H plus or hydronium, you'll see they're both used here. Here's hydronium concentration, here's hydrogen concentration. They're interchangeable. They mean the same thing. So you can use either one. But it's hydronium times hydroxide. And we saw on when we were talking about how the self-ionization of water that the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations were equal to each other and they equaled 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So if we put 1 times 10 to the negative 7th in for hydronium and 1 times 10 to the negative 7th for hydroxide and you multiply those two together, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So that is always the Kw. That's always the ion product of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So you're going to want to use, we're going to use this equation quite a bit right here. And then always Kw is always equal to the 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now, be, and the reason why we can use this a lot is because most acids and bases are solutions that are in water. And so water is ionizing along with it. And so we can use we can use this because there's water in the solution. So um, if hydrogen is equal to hydroxide concentrations, the solution is neutral. But if we have more hydrogen or more hydronium concentration than the hydroxide concentration, then the solution is acidic. And if we have a less hydronium concentration than hydroxide concentration, then the solution is basic. Now, remember the exponents that we're using right here are negatives. So 10 to the negative second is bigger than 10 to the negative 12th, correct? So do you have to keep that in mind that we're negative, so the smaller number is actually larger for exponents. So what's the concentration of hydroxide ions in a hydrochloric acid solution whose hydrogen ion concentration is 1.3? So it's telling us that hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 1.3 molar, and it wants to know hydroxide concentration. What's that equation we need to use? It, it, yep, and Kw is always what? What value does Kw have? 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And we know hydrogen <laughs> concentration is 1.3. And then we got to solve for the OH concentration. So you're going to divide. You'll probably want to put the 1 times 10 to the negative 14th in parentheses, depending on your calculator. What? questions on that one? Okay. Next one. We want to know the hydronium concentration. If the solution has a hydroxide concentration of
So what's the equation I'm going to use? KW equals hydronium times hydroxide. And KW is equal to what? Negative 14, yep. We do not know hydronium this time. But we know hydroxide <coughs> is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 8. So, what do you guys get? Mm. That doesn't seem right. Did you put both numbers in parentheses? What'd you get, Austin? Yeah. Should get two tenths into the negative seventh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Don't forget to put parentheses around them. Okay. For this next one, it doesn't tell us hydronium or hydroxide, but it tells us that we have HNO3. If you remember, HNO3 is it a strong or weak acid? It's a strong acid. So that means it completely ionizes. So all of this HNO3 is going to convert or break apart, ionize into H plus and NO3. We know the concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And since it's a 1 to 1 ratio, we would have 1 times 10 to the negative fourth moles also of each of these. So we really do know the hydronium concentration. The hydronium concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then they want to know, so we know this. We just found the hydronium. So hydroxide, we're going to use our KW equation. So take 1 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by our 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And I have 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. So hydronium Don't forget to use your units. And the units for concentrations is just molarity, big M. Questions on concentrations using the KW equation. Okay, that's one of our equations we're going to use for acids and bases, and the other ones are going to be pH, constant, pH equations. So pH is just an easier way to compare hydronium and hydroxide concentrations instead of using like times 10 to the negative fifth or whatever. It's um, the negative log of the hydronium concentration. So it's based on the hydronium concentration. It's just a little easier to compare them. Um, it ranges from 0 to 14. Now, once in a while, you can have a negative pH or above 14, but usually it's from 0 to 14. So you take the negative log. And when you put in the hydronium concentration in your calculator, you'll probably want that in parentheses when you do the log. It just Sometimes it will take the log of whatever the first number is then take that value and times 10 to the negative 6 or something. You'll get a wrong answer. So put that, put that log value in there. It's not a clear liquid anymore. (laughs) 
So a, a solution is neutral. What can you tell me about hydronium and hydroxide concentrations? They're equal. Okay. What's the pH? And what is those two concentrations? They're equal to each other. So if they multiply together, they equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Half of that is hydronium, half is hydroxide, so they're equal. They both have a concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and pH is 7. <coughs> what if the solution is acidic? Which one's bigger? The hydrogen, yep. And so hydrogen would be, concentration would be greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and the pH would be less than 7. Because if you, let's say you have something, what's something greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th? 1 times 10 to the negative what? 5th, yep. 1 times 10 to the negative 5th is greater. If I take the negative log of this, that's going to give me 5. So it's the pH is less than 7. So we'll see as, as the hydronium concentration goes up, the pH goes down. Um, what about a basic solution? Which one's larger, hydronium or hydroxide? The OH is larger. That means hydronium is less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th because hydroxide is greater than. So the pH would be greater than 7. Yep. So as pH goes up, the hydronium concentration goes down. High pH is basic, low pH is acidic. Here's some other equations because, um, so our equation was pH is equal to the negative log of hydronium. Now if I want to re rearrange this equation and I want to say hydronium concentration is equal to what? To rearrange a log, you take it 1 times 10 to the exponent of whatever this is, so that would be pH. But since it's a negative log, that's why we have a negative pH in the exponent. And we always want a whole number as the exponent. So if your pH is 2.6, and so it's not your answer wouldn't be 1 times 10 to the negative 2.6. You'd want to actually type that into your calculator and get a whole number as an exponent. Why is that fraction? This one right here? Yeah. It's, you can do 10 to the negative. It's the same thing. You don't have to have the one there. <laughs> okay, we can also do the same equations using hydroxide. So far we've done those two pH equations using hydronium because pH is a hydronium concentration. But if I want to if I have the hydroxide concentration, I can take the negative log of that, but instead of getting pH, it's pOH. And I can also if I want to know the hydroxide concentration and I'm given the pOH, I can do 10 to the negative pOH would give me hydroxide concentration. So you can do the same thing. Just remember if you're doing, if you're using hydronium or hydroxide concentration because that changes whether you get, you're calculating pH or pOH. And then if you add the, two, the pH and the pOH, you get 14. So you can add and subtract depending on what you're solving for. Okay, so those are equations we're going to be using a lot. A couple problems, and I'll give you a worksheet. The identity of each solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. So if pH is 1.5, it is acidic. How about pancreatic fluid? 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Basic, right. This one will be acidic, neutral. What would our hydronium concentration be? Right, it gives us an OH this time. So this is approximately 10 to the negative fourth, because they should add to equal 14. So 10 to, so it's approximately 10 to the fourth, negative fourth, and so hydronium is greater, so it would be acidic. And last one is basic because the hydroxide 
concentration would be greater because it's approximately 10 to the negative second. And so that would be greater. Good. Okay, now let's calculate some pHs and hydronium concentrations. It says the pH of rainwater collected in certain region of the northeastern United States on a particular day was 4.82. So pH is equal to 4.82. What is the hydrogen concentration of the rainwater? What was our equation that had proton concentration and pH? H3O plus. Uh huh. So it would be 10 to the negative 4.82. So you have to actually plug that in your calculator. 10 to the negative 4.82 is. I get 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if you got point zero zero zero, it should have four zeros. That would be right. I would just write it in scientific notation, but molar, just molar. As a unit, it's molar. As a variable, it'd be molar mass, but this is our unit. Okay, hydroxide concentration of a blood sample is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7th. Okay, they want to know pH. Do we have an equation that has hydroxide concentration and pH in it? No. So there's two different ways we can do this. We can use Kw and solve for a hydronium concentration. So Kw divided by the hydroxide concentration gives us hydronium concentration. And then pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration. Or we could right away take the negative log of OH and get the pOH. And then pH plus pOH is equal to 14. OK, so the negative log of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7th, OK, 6.6. Don't forget, this is pOH. This isn't our answer yet, because pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So if pOH is 6.6, .6, that means pH is equal to 7.4. Which one? Put this in parentheses, the 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7. Mm -hmm. You should get the right answer. You get point zero 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 zero. Let me see. I'm just going to show you how you could do it the other way, just to show you, you can use you know, two different ways. So we could have Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, so we would get the height. Do you guys get those kind of calls on your cell phones? They can really call well, it's juniors? Well, it's oh, it's in. Like they're calling directly to each other. Now, mm -hmm. like in the future. She probably puts your number down for everything, so I'll you get the calls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get 4 times 10 to the negative 8 for hydronium concentration then. 
And then pH, you use the negative log of, oops, and you would get 7.4 also. So either way, whichever way <coughs> makes sense to you, whichever way seems easiest to you, you can do that. Let's see, I want, you guys are not an even number, um, Jory, Hope, and Josie, you guys do the top one, and Austin and Carla, you do the bottom one. What do you guys get for n first one? You guys have it yet? No? How would you do it? It gives you the concentration of hydronium ions. It's 3.2 times 10 to negative fourth. How would you find pH? So after you're given, for the first one, if you're given hydronium or hydrogen ion concentration, <coughs> all you should have to do is take the negative log of that concentration to get pH. So you would have of the H, same thing. H. 3.49, yep, that sounds right. And then after, it says after a month, the hydrogen concentration changes to 1 times 10 to the negative third. So you would find the pH of that. It would be the same thing. Negative log of this number is, should be 3, I think. 3. So it changed from 3.49 to 3. Okay, the second group, you guys had one just like that last sample problem we did. 10.5, you would take, so did you find the POH first? Uh, I took the negative log mm -hmm. of the Yep, <laughs> negative log of the concentration would give you POH. Oops. 10 to the negative fourth. And then you take 14 minus that answer because that is POH to find pH. Subtract 14 and you get 10.5. For the second one, you should have 10.5. You got 10.5 this time? Yeah. Good. 